At the same time, you also need to keep the supervision and make sure that they are doing the work they were assigned to and also they are keeping productive. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we make videos on our channel to document our property investment experiences and journey. Along the years, we have learned so much and grown so much. So this channel is all about sharing our experiences and all our takeaways and learnings, ups and downs. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. You might have clicked on today's video because you're looking for ways to delegate and outsource your business. There might be too many tasks on your to-do list and you are wearing too many hats. You are the marketing person, the operations person, the admin person, the finance person, the execution person. You probably at a point where you need more help and you're looking to bring in people into your business to help you manage it better and potentially also to grow and expand your business. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how we delegate our tasks in our business to help manage day-to-day -day business activities and also to grow our business further. So along the years, we have employed a couple of VAs and VA stands for virtual assistants. They can be based in Indonesia, Philippines or even within the UK where our business operates from. There are certain things that we have learned and improved on. Right now, we are working with a VA who is based in the Philippines and so far we are enjoying the process and I would like to share with you some tips on how you can do the same and delegate or outsource in your business. So the first tip is definitely write down a list of tasks that you are doing yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. There is definitely a process and a workflow that you are following throughout your business to acquire clients, to acquire more leads, to generate more leads. There is definitely a process there. And if you're not a process-driven person, I would encourage you on this very first step to outsourcing, definitely sit down and write down, just brain dump everything that you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis and write down the list of tasks that you are doing. They can be as granular as going onto a website and putting in some filters or sending out an email to follow up with someone or picking up the phone to call someone. If you're looking to outsource something like bookkeeping, writing down activities that you're doing day on a day-to-day -day basis can be as granular as taking a picture of the receipt that you receive and uploading it to the cloud. And at this step, once you have written down a list of tasks that you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, mark out those that you don't really enjoy doing. Because the point the point of outsourcing is to make your daily work more enjoyable for yourself at the same time also offering someone else who is qualified, happy to do the job that you possibly don't like doing. So that can be following up on leads generation or bookkeeping or anything else that you don't enjoy in the process of building your business. The next step is think about who can do this job for you and how much is their hourly wage. It's probably only worth outsourcing to someone for an hourly wage when you can be sure that you are making way more money in that hour that is outsourced to someone else. So say for example, if you're making a hundred pounds an hour and a task that you don't like doing can be outsourced for 15 or 20 pounds an hour, perhaps that is a good metric for you to then decide to outsource that task. Specifically for our business, we are in a property investment space. Looking for properties and looking for deals and opportunities can be really time consuming and therefore we are happy to outsource to an sourcing agent or agents whom we pay a fee to for them to bring us a deal. Even though at this stage we are still putting in time to look for our own deals, the deals that we find ourselves tend to work better in terms of return on investment than those coming from sourcing agents. However, if a sourcing agent brings us a really good deal, we are very happy happy to pay the sourcing agent a fee, maybe 3000 5000 depending on the deal and the scale of the investment, we're happy to pay someone that fee. Similarly, when we are looking for HMOs, we tend to sketch out really quickly the floor plans and the dimensions in free softwares and that could take up a few hours of our time. However, when a project is getting bigger and bigger and more complicated, we are happy paying an architect who can bring to the table their expertise and also we pay them for their time to come out to survey the property and also draw up plans and together with their expertise in planning 
application and also their creativity that they bring to the table, we're happy to pay someone for that. So think about when you're outsourcing something, you're not just exchanging someone's time for money, you are also potentially exchanging someone's uh, experience and expertise for money. The very last step is definitely create a process and a workflow and communication system. When you have outsourced something to someone outside of the company and someone potentially even sitting remotely from your company, from where you operate, communication is very very important and if possible you might want to map out the processes and the workflow that you are doing. As mentioned in the first step, you want to have the workflow written down so that when you outsource it to someone else, the person knows what happens before that the job is passed to them and what happens after the job is passed from them. We also realize that communication is super super important to keep the person that you outsource to or your employee engaged. We have learned this from our previous VAs because they start to get bored over the tasks that we assign to them and we did not catch up with them on a weekly basis so they started to feel bored and lost interest and the engagement start to fade away. So something that we have implemented with our VA now is we block out a time in our calendar once a week to make sure that we get in touch, we ask questions, we answer questions, we catch up about what has gone wrong, what is going well and what needs to be improved on on a weekly basis. We have found that that level of communication really helps in keeping the employee engaged and interested in their job. Outsourcing works both ways. It's a two-way street. The person needs to be engaged with your business. At the same time, you also need to keep the supervision and make sure that they are doing the work they were assigned to and also they are keeping productive. So those are our three tips to get started in delegating roles in your business. If you have found that useful and interesting, make sure to give us a like and if you're still not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. See you on the next one. Bye-bye!